Good morning one and all. In this video lecture, we will continue our novel Azadi by Chaman Nahal. In our last video, we saw that Lala Kansi Ram is reminding his school days and the parade of British officials which he enjoyed with his son. The geography books and the huge wall maps in his school rooms proclaimed in bold letters the sun never set on the British Empire. It used to be said that British Empire will last till the death of people. It will never end. But during the parade, it did briefly set here because of the sacrilege committed by these filthy beasts of a filthy race. The killing of dogs was a violent aspect of that parade. Left to themselves, the sergeants would have made men pay for that crime, as they did at recently, as in 1919, when they sought hundreds of them out of hand with machine guns at Jallianwala Bagh. But times had changed for that kind of revenge, so now they only went after the dogs. The sergeants held the cycles with one hand, leaving the other free to carry the gun. They appeared to be cool. They even whistled an old British tune, but the crowd knew the storm brewing inside their minds. Everyone knew that they hate Indians, and obligingly they made room for them, gathering themselves into several small circles. This was quite an effort for these people to adjust themselves so abruptly to another type of formation. The Indian mind, immersed as it is most of the time in such lofty subjects as the Brahman and the Atman, and the ultimate end of man is not a very fast moving mind it takes care of early worldly things rather slowly but knowing the agony of their foreign masters these men with the proverbial generosity of the soul each indian pauses for the entire created universe at that time british officials used to hate indians and indian people also knew the fact despite knowing the fact they were helpless they had to obey whatever they said. It was not for nothing their history spoke of their ancestors feeding snakes with milk or carrying food for tigers into their dens. All created matter was one, man and beast and bird, and the flowers and the trees to boot, and these and these were another aspect of the same Brahman who constituted total reality. Today they govern the Indians. Tomorrow maybe the Indians would rule over them. At the moment they needed their help. Their hurrah parade had been ruined by these nasty dogs, which no one owned and which were a nuisance to the entire community. They must help them to corner these scavengers and destroy them. The crowd had not only split up into several small area nows, but in each area now they had concerned one dog for the ultimate arrival of the sahibs. It went against Lala Kansiram's grain to see a dog being killed before his eyes. Because Lala Kansiram was a kind person, for he was a vegetarian, and it was unbearable for him if someone is killing a dog in front of him before his eyes. If there was another grain in him, in common with the rest of the, his countrymen, much deeper than religious or ethnic conditioning, and that was the acute need for thrilling spectacles in his otherwise drab life. Mornings he went to his store, evenings he came back home. So it was his routine. This had been the routine without a break. It was a non-stop routine for the last 35 years of his married life. No movies, no books to read, no other recreation. His Puritan upbringing kept him away from such pastimes, meetings. Yes, plenty of them. Spiritual meetings, satsangs, political meetings, meetings of the Arya Samaj, he used to attend all these. But they too had a pattern which seldom varied. Somebody got up and spoke on for maybe 60 minutes without a break. Or someone started a chant and the same chant went on for several hours. In the Arya Samaj meetings, you might be asked to fill in an entire evening by looking fixedly at a picture of Swami Dhyanan without batting an eyelid. Political meetings he enjoyed, they were like a merry-go-round. Someone would get up on a platform and start abusing the British and there was always variety in the quality and the content of the abuse. But Lala Kasiram worried about the possibility of police interference at such meetings and even there he did not fully relax. 
a spectacle like a steady dog being shot by a steady Tommy was different. It was fun, he said to himself, quietly so that no one should overhear him. The arena was formed, the dog concerned, and the sahib had finally arrived. Getting off his cycle, the sergeant with the three strips placed the cycle on his stand and taking deliberate aim without more ado, sought the dog dead. Somehow, the poor thing would suspect the end was near. Tucking its tail between its legs, it stared moaning dolefully the moment it saw the man with the gun, but the sahib paid no attention. This bastard had ruined the entire decorum of the trait and deserved instant death. So, this description shows that Angrej sahibs were merciless towards dogs. So he lifted the gun, took aim and fired, and the dog went straight up into the air, six feet high, eight feet high, at times ten feet high, with the impact of the bullet, and then dropped lifeless with its neck broken and curled up hopelessly in its chest. It's a very cruel description, very pathetic. What struck Lala Kansiram was the deafness of the sergeant. Only a few feet away from the dog stood the ring of people, and there was not an instant's hesitation on the part of the Tommy, lest he might miss the dog and hit them. Up went the rifle and bang, and that was the end of the dog. And how elegant the sergeant, sergeant looked when, soon as the dog had stopped shivering, he went forward in his spotlessly polished shoes and cut off its tail. To this day, Lala Kasiram did not know what they did that for. Wo us pooch ka karte kya the, Lala Kasiram ko pata nahi tha. Maybe they stubbed them and hanged them on their walls back home as trophies. Or maybe they got a reward from the company commander and had to carry the tail in as evidence. Ho sakta hai, wo kutte ki pooch ko ek saboot ke tawar pe leke jate hon ki ye kutta humne us parit mein maar giraya tha. What mattered to Lala Kansiram was the precise end of the British Raj, which was seen in as small an act as the killing of a stray dog. No wonder they ruled the world over. No wonder he said to himself, there indeed was no Raj like the Angre's Raj. The respect for the Raj was implicit in his voice. When he declared to his wife in the morning, tonight, Lord Mountbatten is to make an announcement from the All India Radio. Ye dikhata hai ki wo baut hi faithful the. Un, uske dil mein samman tha gore sahibon ke prati. He had fallen in love with the new viceroy the day he saw his picture in the newspaper. If the British were going to lose India, it was not because of Gandhi or the weakening amongst the masses. It was because of the tactical error they made in sending out an ugly viceroy in the crucial days of their Raj. This, according to Lana Kasiram, was the root cause of the tide turning against them. Wevel's bulky frame looked so ungainly in baggy trousers, and then he had only one eye, having spent centuries. Hair didn't the great sahibs in Valiat know that Indians have an ingrained superstition against a one-eyed man. Thanks to the Arisamas, he had got rid of his prejudices. Arisamas eradicated prejudices from the mind of illiterate Indians. He said Om Bhur Bhuvashwaha ten times when he saw a one-eyed man and walked on. But there were men in his land who would return home if such a calamity befall them. Thanks for watching. We will be continuing our next video.